We have more disturbing news coming out of the Middle East. Three United States troops were killed and 34 were wounded on the Jordanian border with Syria. Now, let's go over why these troops are even there in the first place. So, since the destruction of the Islamic State since around 2017, the United States has had a military presence to assist Iraq in their fight to resist any resurgence of ISIS. Now, Tower 22, which is this base that was just recently attacked, is on the Jordanian border with Iraq. Um, Jordan is a key ally to the United States in the region. So they, in combination with Jordan and Iraq, they're working together to push down the Islamic State and making sure they cannot, um, you know, establish any more power in the region. It's also important to note that this Jordanian border uh, is also this Tower 22 base is also right on the border with Syria as well because we also have troops in Syria but more on the northern border of Syria. We have troops in the northern border of Syria to defend our Kurdish allies there. These Kurdish allies are also important in stopping Islamic extremists in the region. Um, Syria hates that we have troops in northern Syria. They say that it's a full-blown imperialist occupation. Mm. Um, that's total bullshit, but it is what it is. Again, these troops are there not because of American imperialism. Rather, we're literally there on invitation by these governments to help them. It's to support our allies. Yeah, yeah. this is not an example of the United States taking advantage of the Middle East or anything. Like no, that. that's not what's happening here. No. no, if anything, the Jordanians and the Iraqis love that the U.S. are there. Yeah, they 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 need our presence yes. um, to, to deter the uprising of these Islamic extremists. Exactly. So, but who hit... Tower 22. Was it ISIS, who United States were there supposedly to fight? No, it was not. It was members of the Islamic resistance, which is not part of ISIS. These are a Shia base. This is a, uh, a group of Shia based militias that have backing from Iran. Now, Iran has said that Tehran was not a part of the attack, that they had no part in planning the assault on American soldiers in the region. Um, but this is iffy. No, we know they do. Right. Yeah, we're American intelligence. We, we've known that the Islamic resistance has ties to Iran for a very long time. It's all about um, did Tehran specifically tell them to attack on this day, though, right? Like, that's when it gets more hazy. Sure. And that's why Iran likes playing fast and loose with these militias, because yeah. they get to pepper the United States with casualty here, casualty there, mm -hmm. without having to actually take the responsibility for any of the blood on their own hands. Yes, but this seems to have, this has crossed enough of a line that we, at least I think there's, there is some uh, sentiment in the U.S. government that we want to hold Tehran accountable. Yes, and specifically, the, a lot of this is coming... Well, first, Joe Biden has said that the, we will be responding. Period. Yes. Something will be happening. Now, what that means, I, I hope that means that we're going after these Shia militia groups more intensely. Mm. I hope that's what that means. Um, I, hope, I do not <clears throat> hope it means that we're going after Iran their contiguous border. Yeah. I don't think bombing anything in Iran is going to help us accomplish anything or make us safer at all. No. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make ourselves safer. I don't mm. think bombing Iran makes us safer. I, I, there is one interesting idea that I've heard floated about mm -hmm. something we could bomb in Iran. Most of Iran's, if not all of Iran's oil exports yeah. go out of one island, yes. which I'm forgetting the name of right now. Um, it's and, very centralized production. Yeah. And if we hit their processing or export infrastructure on that island, um, we would completely cripple their their ability to export um, oil and natural gas, which would cripple their economy. Of it's, course. But it's it, completely integral to it. We have to do another side here. I, at least I want to propose it. Yeah. That's, I think, that's too much of a form of collective punishment. We're not technically at war with Iran yet. We are not in a total war situation with Iran. Mm -mm. And to do that and to cripple their economy to that extent is going to hurt the population in such a large degree mm. that, one, it's going to get, it's going to get them to hate us even more. True. And then, two, for humanitarian reasons, we can't put all those people in destitution because okay. of something that their government chose to do. I think that's a fair point. You know? Um, I, I, I guess it's hard for me... Because I think I agree with you that humanitarian wise, it's it's just it's going to be a terrible thing to do to all those people. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I think the attacks on the Jordanian or on the the Shia resistance groups are kind of useless. Like just like our attacks on the Houthis, 
have been kind of useless. Um, it feels like quenching a hunger from our population, from the people who read the news or who see that American troops got attacked, American troops got killed, and that we should be responding and showing our own strength and retaliation for that. Um, but it's not going to actually further our interests. If anything, it's going to escalate conflict so that there are, that our troops are actually put at greater risk of mm. further harm. Um, so I, I don't know. Part of me feels like I'm landing between do nothing at all because is it really how's it really going to hurt us versus do something that will actually affect them. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I mean, like I like the, I like the strikes that we did on the Houthis for the reasons of like destroying munition hubs, destroying their capacity to fight. Okay. And so like we haven't eliminated the Houthi capacity to fight. We did reduce like 30% of it with our initial strikes. Yeah. Right. We, we chopped down. Now they only have 70% of their military capacity, what they had. Yeah. You know, if we keep that going, that's something that I could see as positive. Okay. Obviously, like that's not that might not be a feasible military strategy. I'm not a military strategist, but if that's something we could do similarly with the Shia militia groups where we're hurting their munition caches, it, it's possible. But remember, in the conversation we had about the Houthis, we talked about how Iran is just going to reload them. Yeah. Right. They're even if they're down thirty percent, that thirty percent is going to be built right back up. Yeah. And in a way, we're just fueling their economy by giving them a war, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and then so then then it kind of brings us to the harder question of like, how do we deal with the Iran situation? I, I feel like this, we had a okay path to peace. It wasn't perfect by any means, but the, the nuclear agreement with Iran and mm -hmm. the Western world between the European Union, America, and Iran, I think was going in the right direction yeah. by reducing the Iranian threat of getting a nuke. Yes. When Trump came into office, he jumped out of that accord. Which was a terrible idea. Which now put uh, it, it put the Irans into a position where now they have no incentive to not build a nuke. Exactly. There is no incentive for them not to commit to pursuing a nuclear weapon and continue to uh, pursue actions against the interests of the United States. There's yeah. no reason for them not to do that. Now. And all of the intelligence that I've read about says that Iran is much closer to having an atomic bomb than they otherwise would have been if we had stayed in that agreement. Yeah. So I don't know what the right answer is. I'm reluctant to say the right answer is bombing Iran, but there are Republicans in Congress who are all for that. Yeah. So we have one senator, Tom Cotton from Arkansas. He said the only answer to these attacks must be to devastating military retaliation against Iran's terrorist forces. Anything less will confirm Joe Biden as a coward. Now, if he says military re retaliation against Iran's terrorist forces, if he's talking about the Shia militia groups, I'm, I, I can accept that. Okay. But if, if he's talking about the, uh, the, the Iranian re or the Islamic Revolutionary Guard, which is the standard Iranian military, mm -hmm. then I don't agree with Tom Cotton. McConnell has also criticized Biden for being too lenient on Iran in the past and is pushing him to do more. Senator Lindsey Graham is going off about how much more needs to be done. I, I again, this isn't these, it, it all feels like political posturing. Yeah, Not necessarily what, what is, they're saying, but the attacks. Well, would what be. can be done? Exactly. What, like nothing, nothing really can be done. The, the other alternative to like going after Iran's oil infrastructure is, is trying to take out their leadership that might be responsible for this. The problem is Iranian leadership is spread out over hundreds, if not thousands of people. And unless you're able to take out the entirety of their leadership at once, which is impossible, you're not going to make any substantial t change to their perspectives or the actions they take. Yeah. So to me, like this is, th this feels like, like when I, when I hear these quotes from these senators, I think about the kind of attacks from the far that far right uh, populist republicans have on the nikki haley types mm -hmm. of just being constant war hawks mm -hmm. right and i in in this way i seem to be in agreement with them that it's not helpful or necessary for anything yeah, like there, i think diplomacy is the only right answer here. i agree i agree and there's an opportunity for diplomacy that i think is coming but we can talk about that in a second because far right republicans 
Chip Roy, Tucker Carlson, Matt Gates have all said that attacking Tehran is ridiculous. Fox, uh, Tucker Carlson specifically said that they are fucking lunatics for suggesting to attack Iran, which I don't disagree with. Yeah, attacking it, Iran is a crazy war right now. That would be that would be you know a decade of United States fighting. It is literally exactly the thing we've been talking about. Not wanting the Israel Gaza conflict to yeah, turn yeah, into yeah. right for months. Yep, it, it is. It's ridiculous. It's again. It feels like these senators are trying to consolidate political support. Yeah, I mean, right. and Democrats aren't Democrats aren't uh, free from it either. No. Leading leading Democrats in the House Intelligence Committee have supported doing something, but have not indicated what that is directly. Um, one House Democrat said, "Deterrence is hard; war is easy." Yeah. Um, in support of deterrence, but deterrence and I don't understand. Like, what? I, I, it's just it, well, if if we get attacked and then don't do something, mm-hmm. doesn't that show that our deterrence is meaningless? Um, because if we have all this deterrence yeah. of all these military things and then we get attacked and we don't use them, sure. then there's no longer deterrence. Okay. I, I get that. I think, I think that's fair. So I think, um, allowing, allowing retaliatory strikes, I think that's a good explanation for why we should retaliate against the Iran backed militias. Yeah. Um, because even though they are backed by Iran, they tend to be more or less independent. Yeah. They operate sp- Yes. Sort of independently. Yes. Like they might, Iran is part of the conversations, but they also don't have total control over these like branches. Yes. Kind of within the region. Um, so they will, even though Iran will continue to support these different, um, like these different extensions of themselves, it the fact that it will actually hurt the, the militias themselves will hopefully emphasize that we that our deterrence is real yes and so then but there's a diplomatic angle to this that i think is actually hopeful is china is now pushing back against iran for iran's support of the houthis yeah in their blockade in the red sea in the suez canal because a lot of chinese oil comes from the red sea yes and now since a lot of and a lot of chinese exports go through the red sea into europe so now that a lot of the Chinese exports and Chinese oil supplies need to circumvent the Cape of New Hope in the south of Africa. Um, China's pissed at Iran yeah. for letting this happen. And so China and Iran are allies. And if China can convince Iran with the United States backing to tighten the grip that they have over these loosely connected fringe radical entities throughout Iraq and uh, Yemen, that could be really helpful. Yeah. Um, there have been reports coming out that National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan and Secretary of State Anthony Blinken have been having conversations, back-channel conversations with their Chinese counterparts, specifically pushing for China to try to apply more pressure to Iran um, to to prevent this kind of disruption to trade. China has been kind of playing coy, but then this article in Reuters came out and said, hey, China is not okay with their interests being so damaged by the Houthi attacks in the Red Sea either, right? We've read articles about how it's specifically hurting China's economy and Chinese businesses. Yeah. So hopefully that can have an effect. But even in this article that we read, it's it's not clear that it will, partly because these are individual independent groups that Iran is dealing with, right? And so the more that Iran tries to clamp down, tries to squeeze tighter as far as controlling those groups, the more likely it is that they slip out of Iran's grasp entirely. Yes, I totally agree with you. Yeah. So, well, it's all very delicate, I guess I would say. Like, it's, we don't know how it's going to go. We're just going to have to wait and see. Yeah.